Hey, this is Passy from Passy's World of ICT, the guy with the white hat. And wow, doesn't time fly when you're having fun? Just check out that clock there. Uh, that's what we're going to do in this tutorial. We're going to use motion tweens to uh, make ourselves a clock, which just keeps going round and round and round. So yeah, that's what time does. So let's get into it. Uh, we need to get into Adobe Animate and do a new Action Script 3. And perhaps we'll just grab these layers and move them down a little bit like that. All right, now the first thing we need is the actual clock face. So over in Google Images, we just search for a clock face, probably if you did clock face without hands. And we found this one and we've got it here. So all we need to do is just get rid of all this stuff, uh, make this clear. And we do all that in Photoshop, but we use the snipping tool that comes with Windows. So you just grab your snipping tool, start up the snipping tool um, in Windows and just go new to do a new one. We'll just move that up out the way a bit. And we're just going to carefully draw a sort of square around this because this is what we want to capture the clock. Now there's a little fine line at the bottom there on the snip. We'll have to remember about that later and, and fix it up. So we go edit copy and that copies it into the computer's memory and the computer will know how big it is. And we jump across into Photoshop and what we do is we go file new. Now Photoshop will know how big that object is and set the width and height automatically. Uh, it sets the color mode to grayscale. <coughs> Not sure what's going on there. It usually needs to be an RGB color. So we'll just change that and we just go create and then we can just go edit up the top here in Photoshop, edit and paste and paste that clock in. Okay, so we need to get rid of uh, all this checkered flag business around the outside. So if we get on the magic wand tool, which is your fourth tool down, so it's quick selection and magic wand, we need to be on magic wand, and just click in there and press delete. And that's taken all that away and turned it white and do the same on the other side and then control and D. Now remember we had that little line across the bottom, so we better get our eraser tool here on the side, the eraser tool, and just very carefully go along the bottom there because even though we can't see it, whoops, we went into the clock, control Z. Control Z if you're American, control Z to go back. Okay, all right, maybe we've gone a little bit into the side there. I'm kind of doing this after work and like it's been a super long day. <laughs> And it's not really the best time to be doing this work. But look, that will do. Now, how do we get the whole background clear? Over in the layers here, if you have a look, and if they're not showing up, you just go window layers to make sure they're showing up. And this background layer, that's producing the white. So we need to like take that away. So if you uh, just go down the very bottom right hand corner here of the screen, there's a little trash can basket, delete layer, a trash can and just press that. Delete background layer, it's saying in a message there in the middle, yes, we want to do that, okay? And that'll give us this clear checkered flag background. Now this is little checkers, so we know this is the real one, not like the one we got off uh, the internet. So now we just go file save as. Now it's important when you save this that you change the type to PNG. Well actually it can be PNG or GIF, um, but PNG we're using so it stays clear. And you can see we've already done it before, but we'll do it again. Clock clear, we'll just call that number two. Okay, and it's PNG for the type, so we've saved that. All right, that's our Photoshop work done. So in Animate, what we can do is we can file and we'll go import and just import it straight onto the stage. We'll get our better one that we made previously, clock clear and open that up. Now that brings it in and it's kind of way too big at the moment. So if in Animate here, we go to the third tool down, the scale tool, and hold down the shift key while you're doing this because that will keep it all in proportion. And we'll just kind of get that guy there in the middle and that's looking nice, so that's done. So this is on our first layer. So let's go down to the layers here and uh, let's just rename that one that that's the clock. Okay, so that layer is the clock. 
Uh, right, now what we need to do next is uh, make a new layer. So we're going to make a new layer, and this one down the very bottom left hand corner, new layer, click on that, double click in the layer. <coughs> this one's going to be called the big hand. And we're just going to draw a big hand of the clock. So, <coughs> excuse me, make sure you're uh, clicked into frame one there. And then we get on the line tool. So we need the line tool under the big capital T there in the tools. And just notice we are in essentials here. So we always work in the essentials view up the top here. So make sure you're in that. And then you can get on your line tool. Now we want it black. And we want the thickness not to be one. That'll be too thin. We want to make that about five. And what we'll do is we'll just go on to our clock here. And we'll draw ourselves a big hand. Okay. And that's drawn in. So let's go on the black arrow tool and click on that big hand. And let's just move it across here for the moment so we can work on it. All right. And what we need to do is while we've got it selected like that, we need to right click and down the very bottom here, convert to symbol and convert it into a graphic symbol is the type. So we're not doing button movie clip. We're doing graphics So make sure it's on graphic. This is going to be our big hand uh, graphic symbol. Okay. Now, when you uh, set this up, see how if we look in close, let's uh, just zoom in there with this zoom tool up the top there, 400, no, that was way too much. Let's do 100 maybe, no, maybe 200. Okay, now see how there's this plus sign here, that's the pivot point of the hand. And if you've watched our other tutorials on things, you might know about this already. But what it means is that when you try and spin that round, it's going to spin from the middle like this. And that's not how a clock spins. A clock, we need it to pivot from the very end here and go round like that, okay? So we have to move that pivot point. Now how you do that is you need to double click this item so you're kind of down inside it editing it. Now how you'll know that you are inside editing is if you go up to the top left hand corner here, see how we've gone down from scene one to big hand. So we're actually inside that big hand graphic symbol. And you think, OK, well, I just grab that plus sign and try and move it. But that's not the way it works. It's kind of back to front. You've got to move the actual big hand. So we're just using the up arrow key here to move that. And it's handy that we're zoomed into 200% while we're doing this, because we can probably see it a bit better. And we just need to get that onto the end of the big hand. OK, so that's done. Now, another mistake to make is to stay down in here, editing the big hand and start doing all of your other work and then things will be messed up. So see up the top left hand corner how we're down inside big hand. We don't need to be there anymore. So we click in scene one to get out of that. Now we zoomed way too close to everything. So let's go up to this zoom tool and get it onto 100 percent, let's say. Or maybe a better one is even um, fit in window just so it all fits nicely on the screen. So on the black arrow tool, we can uh, now move this. Now we have fixed up that pivot point to be down the bottom, but we also need to go on the third tool down the scale tool and make sure this little round dot is also down the bottom. If that was in the middle, you'd need to make sure the scale tool, whoops, that that's also down the bottom as well. So that's all good. So we can just start Grab this and move it across. So we'll take it there and move it into position. Now this position needs to be exact, which means we need to zoom right in, even maybe to 400% and check the middle of that so that it's right in the middle of the circle. So using our arrow keys to move it very carefully, we're just going to make sure that pivot point pretty much is right in the middle of that circle. OK, that's really important. Or it'll look a bit wobbly when it rotates later on. So with our zoomer here, let's go back to fit in window. OK, so that's ready. Now what we need to do is we need to make that rotate round. So while we're clicked on the big hand here, we just go up the top and we go insert motion tween. All right. And whoa, where did our clock go? Well, if we look down in the layers, what's happened is that the uh, clock, we'll be able to copy that across later and fix that. So don't worry about it right now. Um, now, click into the layer where the tween is. All right. Then go across and make sure you're on properties. 
okay not library properties and you'll see how it's got rotate zero times we actually want this to rotate round once so we'll set it to rotate once now the direction we want it to go in is clockwise okay now it's flicked off that because we need to click back on down in the layers make sure on the actual motion tween uh, and then we can see it's rotating around one time and we've set it to clockwise cw the direction a clock goes in so if we press enter what's going to happen is you can see that rotates around but our clock doesn't hang around well what we need to do is just on the clock layer just go down here go to that frame um, number 25 where it's put in the motion tween and just before we do that having a close look at these layers somehow we've jumped one across there so let's just go here on the big hand and try and remove that frame i'm not sure how that happened because usually a tween goes for 24 frames so here we're not quite at 25 we're on 24 that's now correct so on the clock layer click in number 24 and you just need to press f6 the F6 key up the top of the keyboard or function F6 if you're on a laptop like we are and just copy that clock so it hangs around so anyway that's going to make that go around one time so that's all good all right now we're ready to do the little hand so we'll just start uh, make a new layer here and that's going to be our small hand and it's the same thing again all right so we get on the line tool it remembers that it's five and that it's black and we draw a little hand here uh, which is we'll just make it start at three o'clock let's say that's nice and easy uh, now let's get on the black arrow tool and just move that little hand now this is the thing if you go near the black arrow tool see how it goes into bendy mode just press ctrl z or ctrl z if you're in america uh, just to fix that make sure you clicked onto the object so click onto it then you can move it otherwise it'll try and bend it and do all this stuff Okay, now we need to uh, remember right click and convert to symbol and this needs to be a graphic symbol and this one's called small hand, small hand, so there we go, that's done. And you can see here the pivot point isn't in the right spot, so remember we double click to go inside, it's up the left hand corner here, we're down in scene one, actually inside the small hand graphic symbol. And we just move that across so that that little plus sign there, if you can see it, let's just maybe zoom in here. So you can see it, see that little plus sign. So we need to get that kind of right on the end of this guy. And that's looking good. Let's just go back to fit in window. Uh, so that's all good. Now, don't stay down inside small hand. Remember, go up the top left hand corner here. Make sure you click back into scene one. And then we can just move that across. And animate's cool. It's kind of doing these guides here automatically and snapping it in place for us. But if we want to just check, uh, let's just zoom in to 400% and double check. That looks pretty good. It looks right in the middle. So let's go back to fit in window. So that guy's ready. And on the small hand uh, what we need to do there is make sure we're clicked into that first frame where small hand is and go insert motion tween so it'll give us the motion tween and then remember click onto the motion tween and then you can go into properties here and we need this let's just make this rotate round once as well and make it go clockwise so What's happening now is, okay, they're rotating around, but our hands are stuck together sort of thing. Okay, now here's where we need to um, think a little bit about this. The little hand, let's turn off the eye on the big hand right down in the layers. The little hand is okay. It's just going around doing all the hours of the day from 3 o'clock right round to being 3 o'clock again doing 12 hours. So that's all good. So let's turn the big hand back on and think about this. Every time it's one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, the big hand gets back to 12. So in 12 hours, the big hand's actually going to go around and get back to 12, um, 12 times. So all we need to do is on the big hand, click on its motion tween, and we need to change the rotate here in the properties so that it actually rotates 12 times round clockwise. Okay, now... 
what will happen then is that everything happens very quickly and you can hardly see it unless you drag this very slowly this red marker but see that's going to take us all the way around from three o'clock to three o'clock now if we press our control and enter and play this control with the enter key um see it's all a bit too fast so we're getting this scatter kind of blurring that it looks like whoa what's going on we've got a big solid line as well as our hands and we've got two little hands it's all because the animation is going too fast now we could um slow down the whole frame rate of the animation that could be one way to do it because if we click here on the white border frames per second is 24 so maybe we could drop it right down to four to slow it down but what we can do is do some maths. If we think about it, we've got 24 frames here for the little hand for, every, for everything to go around once. So if you want to slow it down, what you do is you drag out these layers. But we need to um, drag out the motion tween and make it a multiple of 12. So look, what's going to work well is 12 times 24 is 144. Uh, no, sorry, 12 times 24 is 288, and so we'll take half of that, 144, which is a multiple of 12, because 12, 12 is a 144. But anyway, trust us, 144 is the one to go to. Now, our timeline here is only going to 110, and on yours it might be zoomed in even more and even go less. So down the bottom here where the mountain symbol is, there's a zoomer. So we just need to use a zoomer to... Uh, get it so we can see where 144 is and then we just take this uh, big hand layer if we move there see how we get these double arrows when you move near the edge of it once you've got them you can drag it out now there's 145 so we'll just bring it back one and if we check down the bottom that is at 144 so that's good do the same thing on the little hand drag that out and then we need to click in 144 and you can check down the bottom here that it is 144 in the middle that orange 144 number and we just do function and f6 to copy our clock so now we'll kind of have a more reasonable speed moving clock and if we press Control enter um, that's really nice that's kind of a nice speed and that's pretty much our clock finished if you're wondering how we got the yellow background we just uh clicked out of everything and clicked on the corner of this white part uh, not in there because see how we got the blue line that's actually the clock you need to click just outside of that and see stage color is um, white well if we just click on that we can make it kind of a nice little greeny yellow like that and that's it our project's done and we're ready to save it okay so we'll be making another video um, about turning this into a movie clip so that we can then use the clock as a clock on the wall in another project. But anyway, that's going to be a, another lesson. Now, you might also be wondering, well, this is great. The clock keeps going round and round. What if I was doing a um, animation? I only wanted to show sort of three hours passing, like, and not only have it go three hours. Well, we're glad you asked because we've been recommending in the links, in the descriptions to our video, a course which I've forgotten to queue up here so we'll just google for it uh, okay it's called guided computer computer tutorials uh, tutorials and it's the animate CC so let's see what that brings up gct.com AU. I think it's this link right here yeah this is it so anyway if you go to guided computer tutorials go to the Adobe and go to animate and flash and click on animate CC that'll take you to this page so this is a great course that's at a good price because it's in Australian dollars so it'll even be cheaper for you American guys and it's got lots of lessons for beginners on Adobe Animate. So this is a course that we use uh, these modules in module one with our students to, for them to learn Animate. And in that one, in chapter seven, there is a step-by-step -step guide on how to make a clock that just goes a few hours, not all the way around, okay? Uh, the one we've done kind of keeps spinning round and round uh, the 12 hours, but this one, has the clock just doing a couple hours in it so if you want to know how to do that 
guided computer tutorials. Recommend you get all of them anyway. Uh, they're a great accompaniment to uh, the videos we've made. And this kind of relates to chapter seven in that video where they do a clock. And so that's pretty much it. Uh, we've got our fabulous clock and all of that, and that's all done. So um, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time doing Adobe Animate.